Buford. Yes, sir. I'm sorry I left. I thought you were through. Well, I thought so, too, but you're dealing with a very treacherous guy, and you all just must not even come in quoting him anymore, because he's a no-good son of a bitch. And I think you know it. But he announced tonight he would ask Johnson to provide sufficient officers to protect the Negroes. He appeared before the joint session, and he says that... Uh, uh, that the uh, uh, federal government, uh, they say our courts are too slow, Wallace said, therefore we must now submit to mob rule. It's a tragedy and a sorrow beyond words, but the federal judge compounds anarchy by ordering the state to protect the army. Mm. He said tonight that he would ask Johnson to provide protection for Negroes marching from Selma to Montgomery. I intend to call on the President of the United States to provide sufficient officers to guarantee the safety and the welfare of citizens in and around the route. The federal government has created this matter. They can help protect it, Wallace told the television. No, no. Can you get that open? Juanita, please get off the phone, honey. He said it would take 6,171 law enforcement personnel working eight-hour shifts to possibly guard the marching. Well, I'm not going to talk to him anymore now. I'm through with him. Well, you better tell him you're not. Tell him you're not. Tell him you read it on the ticker. And I've been leaving since 3.30 messing with that son of a bitch, and he is absolutely treacherous. Well, you know, I told you when you... Tonight I should ask the people of Alabama for restraint. I ask you to stay away from tension. I ask you not to play in the hands. I ask you to stay home. I hope that when this march takes place, you'll stay there. He did not immediately specify whether you'd ask Johnson for troops or marshals. Wallace began his speech after the fist fight, the arrest of 90 civil rights advocates, and the countermarch by segregationists, deep in racial tensions in Montgomery. Well, I told Burke Lee all the way through that I didn't trust him and, and everything, so I'm just not going to answer any call to him or talk to him. Well, I'd answer one and just tell him, now, listen, George, uh, uh, I offered you, I went over to the president today and told the president that I'd talk to you and you wanted help. Yeah. He called you and offered to give it to you. Right. You ran like a goddamn rabbit. Then you ran down to the television and told them that uh, we had created, therefore you're going to ask him. Now, why didn't the hell didn't stand up like a man and and say what you're going to do to begin with. Well, I tell you, then, if it's all right with you, I'm not going to answer his call. If he keeps calling me, I'll wait till in the morning where I can record it, see? Because I, I told him all the time. Come over here. You can record it. Anyway. Well, I, I can record it from here. That's where I've been doing it from my apartment. Right. I would do the, the, you know, quite a Yeah. I would do it. I would do it. And I'd talk well, to him. I mean, now, uh, he'll, he'll start calling me in a few minutes, and I'm just not going to answer him. No, I don't morning. think, I don't think, I think you ought to. I think you ought to answer him tonight and just say, uh, now, let me tell you, George, I just want this for the record. Yeah. You call me up, ask for help. I offered to give it to you. You ran like a rabbit. That's right. That's right. Well, okay. now, then you went publicly and you said this. Now, I don't know whether you mean it or whether you don't, and if you do, I... You uh, you come out there and put it on the record, because I'm I've got a record and I won't I'm, I'm not going to be double crossed this one. I will do. I'm going to issue a statement here that kind of burns his tail, and I'll ask him to call you and give it to you. Okay. Good. Waiting, waiting.